Welcome to Spectrum Perspectives, real talk with parents, professionals, and autism advocates with your host, Cindy Gellermini. Um, my son used to, my son, David, my neurotypical son, he had gone to young life camp and I had told him that, cause I went when I was a kid and I said, you know, it'll be the best week of your life. You're going to love it. And then when he signed up for that, they asked him to be a buddy for their, uh, Capernaum camp for special mm -hmm. needs kids. So he was a one-on-one -on -one buddy for that week. And when he came from home from that, he said, mom, that was the best week of my life. It was like life changing for him. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's kind of the same thing. Yes, you know, that happens. Yeah, it definitely. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really cool. Um, okay. So tell me where you are now with everything. Yeah. Like, how is everything? <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it's, um, we could kind of, it's like pick the week and I could tell you. Uh, <laughs> so I would say initially. How many kids do you think you have? Um, so right now, so pre-COVID, we were, we were about 150 to 200 kids on a weekend just with special needs. Wow. Um, this is all so, the different campuses. Correct. How yes. many campuses are there? Do you know? Can you keep There track? are seven. Okay. Uh, there's only five that are open right now. Okay. So, um, so where right. are they? Can you name the locations? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have um, here in Parsippany in Morris County, we have a location in Middlesex County in Sa at the Sayreville High School. Um, we have a location in, we have two locations in Union County. Um, one is in Mountainside, one is in Garwood. We have a location in Somerset, which meets at the Somerville High School. And um, we are opening two lo new locations uh, one in Passaic County and uh, Wayne, and that's under construction at the moment. And we have another location in Mercer County um, in Princeton uh, that will be opening ne later next month. So we're kind of a little bit spread out right now. We're starting to, uh, we have the goal to uh, saturate the state with the gospel of Jesus so that we would have something available in all 21 counties. So we're about a third of the way there. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, you guys are, it's amazing how much you've grown because I remember when the church started back in Morristown. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so are, do you think you're going to have the special needs program in all of these locations or you don't know yet? Oh, yeah. So we're, we're definitely at the five that we have open right now. Um, services are available at all five. There, it depends on the, the family, quite honestly. Some of our families came running back. Um, some of our families are a little more hesitant and, um, you know, maybe they're taking um, the precautions just on the weekend because of school and things like that. So we're kind of seeing a mix. Um, I would say it's probably closer to the 50 or 60 mark uh, as far as kids right now that we're seeing on a weekend, um, which is still, you know, fairly significant, um, still presents, I would say it presents more challenges right now as far as finding enough buddies, um, because even though our buddies still absolutely love to be involved with our kids, for some of them too, they have had some challenges during this time, and so they may not be as available as they were um, before, and so that's just one of the, you know, ongoing challenges that we're, we're kind of working through right now. So there's definitely still the heart there for it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just what people feel they can do right now in this, in this time. Sure. Yeah. With, yeah. The COVID and all that kind of yeah. stuff. I think everything is like that right now. I think everybody's yeah. trying to yes. figure out their, their, their new normal, I guess. Right. right? right. Yep. So, um, all right. Awesome. So it's liquid church right? Yep. In all these different locations. Um, so I think if people are in the situation that I was in, <laughs> where there's just nothing, you know, and if it's important to you, um, you know, be, having a place, a, a church to go to and to worship and to be able to relax and feel comfortable with someone taking care of your child for the hour, or two hours, or however long the service lasts, um, I think they should definitely, I, I think you guys are really setting the bar, you know, for, for this. I mean, because when I've heard, when people have brought it up, you know, liquid always comes up. It's like, you guys are the, you guys are, are, uh, 
the trailblazers, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but autism has grown so much over Absolutely. the years, so, you know, yeah. I mean, it's just exploded, you know, compared to, you know, 10 years ago, it was probably what one in 200 right. kids or something right. like that. Um, you know, now it's one in 50, one in 32, you know, right. so um, there's more and more and more of a need. And just by you, that number that you're telling me 150 to 200 kids is just, I mean, some churches probably don't even have that many kids in yeah. their entire Sunday school system. Right. <laughs> you know, right. but to have that many kids with special needs is crazy. Yeah. Um, so, so wonderful. So if, if people want to come on a Sunday and check it out, um, should they get in touch with you ahead of time, you know, to just to, you know, mm -hmm. I guess, right? Yeah. So it, um, on our website, liquidchurch.com, um, under kids and family, we have a page uh, specifically for special needs, and we have an intake form there. And it's a little involved. It takes maybe 15, 20 minutes to fill it out if you're going to include like adequate detail, really, um, about your child. And it's really just because we're trying to understand without having met your child yet, mm -hmm. um, how we can best support your child on a Sunday. And then once uh, we receive that, we then have um, our, our turnaround time is that we will get back to you within a week and set up your first visit so that when you arrive and your child, we're trying to like eliminate all of the, oh, fill this out, take the, you know, anything that's going to like make the experience a little clunky when you first show up, mm -hmm. we're trying to eliminate all of that. And so that when you arrive, you know, okay, you're going to get your check-in sticker and then you're, you're going to be taken to the classroom. And, um, and from that point, that's when we then work to introduce the child to um, the buddy. And in some cases, you know, maybe the child doesn't need buddy. There's just certain accommodations that are, are needed. And that's, that's perfectly fine, too. So um, in that case, it just it's really more that we want your first experience to be excellent. And in these current circumstances right now, it's challenging for us if you just show up on Sunday and we don't have any knowledge to, to kind of try to, you know, move things around and make your first experience be a great one. And, and we definitely want your child to love their first experience. So we'll do things a little bit differently on their first Sunday. Um, we're trying to learn them and understand what they enjoy, what they don't enjoy about even our environment or our program. And so our focus is on building that relationship between uh, the child and the buddy. And so, you know, let's say, for instance, your child's obsessed with Legos, then we're going to have some Legos ready for your child to play with, with the buddy. You, and they might be over in the corner while everybody else is doing something else in that moment, because we're just trying to build that relationship and get to the point where the child knows like, oh, actually, I really like this place and uh, I'm enjoying myself. And then we slowly fade, you know, not that you're doing Legos the whole time and, and we fade those things away. Um, but really any advance that notice that um, we get is a huge help. And, you know, I definitely still get forms on Saturday night <laughs> sent to my sent to my inbox and I'm like, oh mm -hmm. no, like we're not gonna have somebody tomorrow yeah, morning. Yeah. yeah. So I always, you know, it does you get an automatic reply saying that we need a week. Um and like I said, it's it's really we want you to come to church. We absolutely do. We just need a little bit of time to prep and and be ready so that your child can have the best experience. Yeah. The church, uh, the one at Persephone, I, I went to visit one time. It's very colorful. It's very vibrant. Um, it's a, it's a, it's just a really fun atmosphere. Just as soon as you walk in and everybody's smiling and happy and everybody's in a good mood. Um, it's just a really, really fun and friendly place to be um but i'm thinking from the eyes of an autistic child is that overstimulating is it too much you know um my daughter taught special ed and when she went to a new school she had the kids come in at the end of the summer just to come in and meet her yeah. the classroom first make sure the kids yeah. are comfortable so that when the first day of school comes they know yep. what they're walking into and they're not afraid so do you ever do, do anything like oh that? yeah <laughs> them become ahead yeah, of we have we have done that plenty of times um ahead of time we've also done like when the school year moves and they're moving to a new classroom mm -hmm. um you know we we call it move up day but 
Um, we take extra care with our kids with um, special needs to give them extra time to acclimate to the new room. So they'll start visiting that room several weeks before move up day so that they feel comfortable. But yeah, we can certainly arrange things like that. We've definitely, um, we've done that before and it is super helpful when a child kind of sees the lay of the land first sure. without all the noise and all the, you know, all yeah. of that added to it. Yeah. Um, and one of the other things that, you know, it was part of our original dream when we moved into this building in 2017 was to have a lot and an, a parking lot and an entrance specifically for um, our families with special needs. And I um, am actually looking at it right now. The lot is in the process of, it's been a whole project this summer, um, but it's actually being paved. And so it should be ready um, in the next month. And so I love that. Like, it's exactly what you said. We don't want our, our families first to have to walk a mile to get you know into our building. So we have specific parking permits for our families. They just put that on their their little um, mirror, their car mirror, and um, when they pull in, our parking team knows exactly where to direct them, and they kind of, you know, are treated as VIP to be able to get into the door um, quickly and easily without, you know, being concerned about the, just the getting in process, as you know, right. that, that right. can be the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, for anybody that's gone to, like, the mega churches, it's like a whole <laughs> It's yeah. a whole process just to yeah. park and get in the door. Yeah. Uh, um, and then I'm trying to think of what other questions that moms would ask. What if they have like special dietary needs and stuff? Yeah. So um, we don't generally serve food during our um, classroom times. Anytime okay, no we're snack. Gonna... Okay. So then that no was snack. Yep. Okay. We will make accommodations if, you know, somebody had for health reasons, we've had, um, you know, we have students that um, have diabetes that might need to have something at a, spe a specific time. So we will absolutely accommodate and make that happen. Um, but there aren't any, you know, any, sometimes there are activities that involve um, not really edible food, but ingredients maybe of food that are, so we do post signs each week at the entrance of the classroom if they're using something, maybe um, it's something that, you know, has gluten in it that the kids might be right. playing with. So that way, if that's a concern, we know and we have something additional for that child to do. Um, and so it doesn't feel like they're doing something different. It's just accommodating that need. Right, right. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm trying to think of any other questions that they, what kind of questions do parents typically ask you that they're concerned yeah. about before they come? I think, um, you know, the, the big ones are generally, um, you know, can I stay with my kid the first time or, you know, as many times kind of thing. And so pre-COVID, we definitely allowed parents to stay with us, with the child the first time, because it was actually like a fast forward button for us. We would get to know the child a little bit faster, having the parent in the room to be able, oh, doesn't like that, likes this, doesn't, you know, um, that's been a challenge with COVID um, just because we're trying to limit exposure to um, how many people are in the room, how many kids. And so um, that has been a little bit more challenging, but we always tell the, the parent, like we make a point of, um, we have pagers available. If you need pagers, we can call your cell phone. If there's anything that we need to reach you um, during the service, we absolutely will. So it's not like you're gonna come back and find your child crying because we didn't you know, meet whatever need it was that they, they had. Um, I think the other, you know, there's always a concern for safety right? So who is specifically going to be working with my child? What's the protocol if child were to run out of the room, you know? Um, our security team is aware of, um, you know, our, our classrooms, they're stationed outside of our classrooms so that uh, if we know we've got a runner on board that day, so does security. They that would have been my concern. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, and they're great. Our security team is great. They know like to keep, keep an eye. And, um, and so, you know, those kinds of things, we definitely want parents to feel at ease that, um, you know, we're, we're keeping a close watch, but we have a plan in place. Um, and, and then I think the other thing is the, you know, they, a lot of parents are concerned, 
um, you know, what if my child doesn't, because we're an inclusion environment, what if my child doesn't do what everybody else is doing? You know, is that okay? Or some parents are actually, you know, want their child to do everything. And, and that's our goal too. We want to um, help them have the fullest experience. But, you know, at the same time, we want the child to love coming. So we have to build that relationship first. So sometimes I'm like, oh, whoa, slow down. Like they're only here for one hour a week. You know, that's going to take a little bit of time to get to that place, but we're going to get there. We're absolutely going to get there. And, um, and so I love when we're able to have those collaborative um, moments with parents during the week you know sometimes on Sunday morning it's hard like you're just you're picking it you're dropping your kid off you're picking your kid up um and so we really do try to highlight what went well because we also know that all week long at school you're hearing everything that is being worked on or may not have gone well and so we're trying to really keep that feedback positive and encouraging now if there's a challenging behavior and we're trying to figure out how you handle it or how the school handles it um, because we want to be as consistent as possible, then we'll address that in the middle of the week. You know, can you tell us how you do this? Or um, what's the trigger for biting for your child? Or, you know, those types of things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then it's usually, you know, I feel like we want the parents to also not feel like when they come to pick up their child, what am I going to be hit with that didn't go well today? And so that's just not part of the equation for us. Um, you know, as a mom, I, I know what that's like and I know how that feels. And I certainly don't want any other um, family to go through that. And, you know, the other thing that we hear frequently is our stories, just like uh, your story of trying to find a place for your child. And we've also seen so many families who have been hurt by other churches where maybe their, their child, all of their children were growing up in the church. And then all of a sudden their child with special needs was not uh, treated the same way and um, you know either they were asked to not bring their child back or told they couldn't handle their child and that breaks my heart every time I hear that and um, I you know we work extra hard to earn their trust then so that they know that this isn't just something we talk about this is something we actually live out here yeah I remember you know Pastor Tim way back in the very beginning when he started the church I think his goal what it was very sensitive to was people being hurt by churches. Yes. Um, you know, there's many things that, that can happen in many churches where people get offended or hurt or whatever, and they leave and they, they vow to never go back to church ever again. Right. And he wanted to be that place that was like the safe place, yeah. you know, for people to come. So, you know, I understand that that's his heart. So I, I'm really happy to see that it's being extended to families with special yeah. needs also. Yeah. Um, the last question I had real quickly was because you mentioned, you know, biting. Uh, that was the thing that scared off my church at the time was the it was injury and stuff. So I'm assuming that you tell the buddies ahead of time, <laughs> you know, hey, it's very, what you could, they could headbutt you, they could bite yes, you, push you, you know, yeah. whatever. Uh, do, do you have a, do they sign a waiver or something? Like, how do you handle that? We, so we do, we, in our training, when they're onboarding, we do go over some, you know, possible things that could happen, um, you know, like the good, the bad, and the ugly of what could happen so that they're not surprised. But I, you know, if you're not used to being in that environment and you're all of a sudden bit, it is jarring. It's like, wh what just happens? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think for our, um, for our volunteers, it really is this constant conversation. So when we, when we get that intake form, we then create a profile about the child and in gen general terms, not like, um, <laughs> Not that you need to understand all the abbreviations that are in special ed, you know, but in a way that um, these are things the child really likes. These are things they don't like. This is what's going to upset the child. This is, you know, um, and so they have a, a good sort of paper understanding, right? And then when they actually are working directly with the child, there is another volunteer who is not... Um, directly working with the child, but is observing that process to kind of help and coach and give feedback. And so whenever we do have an incident where we've got a biter, um, then that's when we bring in our volunteers who are behaviorists or who do, you know, they do this all week long. And so we, we start to pay attention to like, what are, what just happened before, you know, let's just figure that out. 
What is the child trying to communicate? So that's something really big that we try to emphasize with all of our um, so you have behaviorists bodies. that are volunteering their time to do this, even though they do this during the week, they still are volunteering. Yeah. Wait, and they may not volunteer every single week, but when I know I've got a case that where it's like, Hey, well, we in help. this location, yeah. we, we need help with this one. Then they'll step in, they'll give us their feedback and um, we'll create a plan and move from there. So um, yeah, we do try to kind of uh, give a heads up to those that might have that tendency. Um, and also about being, you know, understanding of this is actually a form of communication. I know that doesn't feel great, um, mm -hmm. but that is actually a form of communication. And so we all need to stop and try to figure out what's happening in the moment. So yeah, that's great. So and you guys are not worried about the liability of or whatever. I think with other churches, that's what that's what scares them is, you know, what we've definitely done our you know, I would suggest to anyone um, doing their homework with their insurance company and, and things like that, as far as the, the protocols and procedures that you need to have in place. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I mean, a, a, a child could be injured in any room um, at any time for, you know, the freakish most, you know, thing that you may not ever expect to happen. Yeah. They could so, step yeah. on a toy car. <laughs> exactly. And then you wipe out the next thing you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it is just being reasonable and not uh, making too much, uh, but also understanding the risks involved in certain things. And then, you know, one of the best pieces of advice that I got very early on um, in the process was to just be very upfront about what you can do and what you can't do, you know. So, um, for instance, uh, we had a student years ago who had a feeding tube and needed, um, you know, to be fed at a certain time. And I'm like, I just, I don't have anybody that is equipped to do that. If you give me a little bit of time, we can work to try to hire somebody to do that. Um, and the parent was very understanding. No, I'll just step into the room briefly, do that, and then leave. But that was something I'm like, we don't really have, you know, staff that are are yeah. used to doing that. I'm not going to give that to a high schooler and say, no. here, go, you know, yeah. so you have to use your head. You have to consult and, and do diligence, but yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. So if there's any churches out there that would want to start a special needs ministry, is there any kind of resources that they can look for or to just, just yeah. start or should they just start small and look at each individual child and see what they could do? I definitely, I mean, I always recommend starting with who you have. And if you say you don't have anybody, I assure you there is someone um, in your community that may, um, you may just not even know that they are there yet. Or, um, you know, but definitely resources that we have found helpful. Um, the inclusivechurch.com has been a resource for us for a number of years. Tons of practical tips. Um, irresistiblechurch.org also has a number of resources, free resources where you can download um, PDFs of training and things like that. There are, there are a number of things out there, but you kind of have to pick and choose, you know, sometimes with some of these very established ministries, um, it can be overwhelming. Where in the world do I even start, right? And so that's why I always say you start with who you have, um, and how do you meet the needs so that mom and dad can actually go to church? And it may not look like the kind of special needs ministry that we have at this moment, but that's right. not what ours looked like 10 years ago either. Right, right. You started small. And I would say, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Don't, you know, if they, if you start looking online, like you said, it could be overwhelming. Yes. I look like too much. And I think people get overwhelmed and like, forget it. This is too much. We can't do it. That's what happened with me. But if you just start like, hey, we've got two or three kids. Let's yes. find a buddy and just start there and see where it goes from there. It sounds like that's the best way. Yeah. So, and usually it always takes a mom of a kid with special needs themselves mm -hmm. to make it happen. Right? <laughs> and you proved my point once yes. again. <laughs> Mom's rock. Yay. Yes. <laughs> All right, Susie, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a pleasure yeah. talking to you and learning from you. And uh, I hope that we inspired other churches to go out there and start special needs ministries. Yeah. So um, if people want to contact you about it, how, how do they do that? Uh, probably the easiest would be to email me. So uh, Susie, S-U-Z-I at liquidchurch.com. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed listening and it helped you gain a new perspective. 
If you're interested in buying our book series, Robbie's World and His Spectrum of Adventures, the link will be in our episode description as well as my Instagram and Facebook pages. If you enjoyed the show and you'd like more content, please be sure to hit that like button, follow us, and don't forget to leave us a great review. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to join us again on our next episode of Spectrum Perspectives. Have you heard of the one called Savior? Have you heard of his perfect love? Have you heard of the one in heaven? Have you heard how he gave his son? Cause I have found this love. I believe in the sun. Show me your Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to join us again on our next episode of Spectrum Perspectives.